Welcome to Faith Life Ministry International, the home of miracles. Total Gospel to Total Man. Brothers and sisters in Christ, welcome to the month of October, our month of turn around. Hallelujah. Glory be to Jesus. God has done it again and again and again. We have been privileged by the mercies of God to see the tenth month of the year. What a challenging year. Yet, thank God for mercy. His mercy this year has done wonders in our lives and in our family. And for that, we return the glory and the honor to him in Jesus' name. Just lift up your hands and just wave your hands to Jesus and acknowledge the faithfulness of God, the mercies of God over your life, over your children, over the works of your hands, over your family, over your health. Your enemies had said, they had predicted that you will not see this day. But here you are. Shame to the devil and shame to the agents of the wicked. They say you will not live to see October, but you are standing strong and healthy because of the mercies of God. If not for God who was on your side, what will your enemy have said? But thank God who have not allowed us to be consumed by the wickedness of our enemies. Once more, lift your hands in appreciation to God. Father, we acknowledge your faithfulness, your mercies over our lives. Thank you for our health, our body, our resources. Thank you for your mercy over our lives in Jesus' mighty name. October is our month of turn around. I am believing God that you will experience and encounter the anointing of turn around. Good for you. Our God is an expert in turning around situations. The Bible is full of stories of people who turned their situations, their lives around from bad to good, from zero to surplus, from nothing to something by the help of God and by the encounter with the hand and the grace of God. I am trusting God that this month, that hand, the hand of God, the grace of God will help you also to turn your story around in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, the Son 
of the living God. God is an expert in bringing men from nothing and making them something and somebody. May that be your portion this month. May that be the portion of your children this month. May that be your testimony this month. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. Let's look at a few scriptures to establish the fact that our God is an expert in taking people from nothing and making them something and somebody. So whoever is laughing at you at where you are now is laughing too soon. Don't give up on anyone who still have life. For when there is life, there is hope. Because God can turn around your situation in one second. In one day. Hallelujah. Go through the scriptures. Look at David. He slept in the wilderness as a shepherd boy. Woke up the next day anointed as king over Israel. Look at Rahab, the prostitute. Her story was turned around from a prostitute she became an honorable woman who ended up in the lineage of the Lord Jesus Christ. Look at Joseph who slept in the prison as a prisoner. The next day was anointed as a prime minister over Egypt. Look at Saul, a persecutor of the church. One who was killing believers. Ended up as an apostle, as a man of God. Look at Esther, a slave girl who by the encounter of, with God's favor became a queen in a foreign land. I am trusting God. He is the same yesterday, the same today, and tomorrow and forever. If he's done it for one, he can do it for another. This month of turnaround, may God turn your story around in Jesus' name. That area of your life that is a major consign to you, may the hand of God, which is the grace of God, step into it and turn your story around in Jesus' name. From Genesis to Revelation, you will encounter stories like that of people who encounter God and their stories were turned around suddenly. That is how your case will turn around suddenly in Jesus' mighty name. Look at the word of God. Psalm 113, verse 7 to 9. Psalm 113, verse 7 to 9. Nine. Glory be to Jesus, the Son of the living God. He lifts the poor from the dust. Man do shikla hangradia. And the needy from the garbage dome. This is the God whom you serve. He's a lifter of men. He can pick you up and suddenly you are transformed. Your story is turned around and is changed. Everyone looking down at you today, haha, they are in for a shock because by the anointing coming through this telecast this morning, your situation, your story will turn around for the better in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. I don't care how poor you are. I don't care who is mocking or laughing at you. When the hand of God comes, the anointing that turns around situation, it will turn that your case around in Jesus' mighty name. Look at 1 Samuel chapter 2 and verse 8. We're trying to establish that the God whom we serve is a specialist in turning around situations, in picking men from nothing and making them something and somebody. 1 Samuel 2 verse 8. He lifts the poor from the dust and the needy from the garbage dump. He set them among priests. You don't have to have any form of royalty in your bloodline. Already you are royalty by salvation. God can pick you from nowhere and place you somewhere and make you a woman and a man of honor. Just the way a prostitute Rahab became an honorable woman. Just the way a shepherd boy David became a king. That is how grace can turn your situation around. Just the way a fisherman, Peter, became a head of the disciple. Just the way a persecutor of the church, Saul, became Paul, the apostle. That is how the hand of God will change your life, change your situation in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. I know testimonies and testimonies of people who were once arm robbers or courtiers people who were once prostitutes, who today are men and women 
anointed honorable men and women in the community and the society where they live in. I am believing God. Lift your hand if wherever you are listening to me right now. Let the anointing for turnaround come upon you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Don't give up on that your child. Don't give up on that your son, that your daughter. Grace can turn their situation around in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, the son of the living God. He lifts the poor from the dust and the needy from the garbage dump. What does he do to them? He sets them among priests, placing them in seats of honor. Makushi Klina Angradiha. For all the earth is the Lord's and he, and he has set the world in order. He does whatever he will. That is why he's sovereign by, by nature. He is God all by himself. His yea, his yea, his nay, his nay. What he says, he will do. I decree in the name of Jesus. This is the 10th month of the year 2020. Our month of turnaround. May the grace of God come upon you. May your financial situation experience a turnaround. For the poor, you shall become rich. For the sick, you shall become healed. For the oppressed, you shall become delivered and set free. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. They that are down today by the help and by the hand of God, you shall be lifted in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. This is the God whom we serve. This is our Father. This is our Maker. An expert in lifting men in picking people whom the world has written off, who has said you will end up as a nobody. That is a lie of the devil. When men write you off, that is when God pick you up. When men write you off, that is when God pick you up. Make sure your hope and your trust is in God and his ability to do the things which he has promised that he will do. If God says it, he will do it in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. John chapter 9 and verse 25. Hallelujah. John 9, 25. I don't know whether he is a sinner. This is the blind man who had an encounter with Jesus. Hallelujah. Jesus is a story changer. I'm telling you, go read the scripture. The anointing upon the ministry of Jesus is to turn lives around. If you truly have an encounter with Christ, your life will experience a turnaround. In the name of Jesus, except your salvation is not genuine. If your encounter with Jesus is genuine, from a sinner you shall become a saint, a righteous man. From a nobody you shall become a somebody. From the poor you shall become a blessed person. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. The man encountered Christ and received his sight. And then the Jews were trying to confuse him. And this was the reply of the man to them. He said, I don't know whether he is a sinner. Because they told him that man is a sinner. Don't celebrate him. Because the man was celebrating Jesus. This was his reply to them. He said, I don't know whether he is a sinner. The man replied, but I know this. I was blind. Now I can see. Hallelujah. He encountered Jesus and the turnaround anointed. And the anointing for turn around, turn the man's situation around. Once he was blind, now he can see. By the end of this telecast, I decree in the name of Jesus Christ, that shall become your testimony. Those who used to know you, by the time they meet you after now, they will say, ah, is this so and so? Is this that person? Is this her? Is this him? Because your life will be completely transformed. If you have an encounter with God, something will happen in the inside of you. Look at Abraham, a 75 years old man. Do you know Abraham was an idol worshipper? He was an idol worshipper till the age of 75, until he encountered God, the living God. He was an idol worshipper. If God can turn around the life of an idol worshipper at the age of 75, and he became the father of faith and father of nations, I decree in the name of Jesus, your case is not a write-off. Lift your hand and say, Lord God, turn my story around. Say, in the name of Jesus, I receive grace for a turnaround anointing. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. One day with God, one day with God can do for you what 30 years of struggle 
and effort has not been able to deliver to you. So I want you to release your faith this month of October. Hallelujah. This is the first Sunday of the month of turnaround. Believe God. Open up your heart. Release your faith to encounter God, the God of turnaround. I've been able to establish with these few scriptures that the God whom we serve is an expert from Genesis through to Revelation. As we just saw in the life of Jesus, encounter with this blind man. He can turn your situation from bad to good, from zero to surplus. He can make you a living testimony in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Ah, the stone which the builder has rejected has become the chief cornerstone. That is what God will make out of your life. That will become your testimony. You will end this year with your two hands up above your head saying, Thank you, Jesus, for the turnaround anointing. Hallelujah. Genesis chapter 50, verse 20. Hallelujah. Look at this scripture carefully. You intended to harm me. They have plotted against you. They have conspired against you. All that they have done, they have put together so that they can diminish you. So that they can pull you down. But it's a setup by God. All your enemies are busy celebrating, but they are celebrating too soon. Because God isn't done with you yet. If you have life, then there is hope. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You intended to harm me, but God intended it all for good. All things work together for good. He brought me to this position so I could save the lives of many people. This is the story of Joseph. All that his brethren, his brothers did was intended to destroy him. They sold him into slavery. It was intended to harm him. What have people been doing to harm you? People have castigated you. People have spread wrong and lies about you, funny stories about you. People have done all manner of things against you in that office, in that community, in that organization, all with the intention to pull you down. Child of God, jump up and shout praise the Lord. Because everything that your enemy are putting together to pull you down is a setup. It's an arrangement by God. Because God will use it to lift you up. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. He said, but God intended it all. The selling of me, the throwing me into the pit. God, Joseph told them, he said, God intended it all for good. He said, look at it today. See what God has made out of my life. I decree to you, God allowed you to go through that mess so that he can give you a message. I hope you got the message out of that mess because your generation needs you. Your community needs you. I want that young man, I say, young man listening to this telecast right now, the Holy Ghost is talking to you. The reason God allowed you to go through the things that you experience is so that he can use you as a voice, young man. Hallelujah. Go back to your community and declare the counsel of the Lord Jesus Christ. And let them see the man whom God has made out of you, just like the case of Saul that became Paul the Apostle. I want you to receive this word from the Lord and get in touch with us by the numbers on the screen. And the Lord God will continuously keep you and bless you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. We serve a God of turnaround. When I was praying for a word for the month of October and I heard the Holy Ghost whisper to my spirit, He said, my son, October is the month of turnaround. I am going to turn around situations. People will sleep and wake up and they will look at themselves and say, is this me? Hallelujah, glory be to Jesus. You that have been pursuing that job, that's a woman listening to me, you've been pursuing that job, not only will God give you the job, what is coming to you is 10 times bigger than what you are pursuing. You will pursue, overtake, and recover. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. You will do things for God that will even amaze you. You will exceed your own expectation. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of of the living God. Hallelujah. Romans chapter 8 and verse 28. God is an expert in turning things around and it ending in your favor. Glory to Jesus. Romans 8 verse 28. And we know, hallelujah, praise the Lord. And we know that God causes everything. Please underline that in your scriptures, please. And we know that God causes everything 
to work together for the good of those who love God and are called according to his purpose for them. If you love God, very soon I'm going to show you ways by which you can flow into the anointing of turnaround. And one major way is love for God and working in his purpose. If you love God and you are in the will of God, brethren, things will work out for your good. Hallelujah. No true lover of God end up in shame in the race of life. No true lover of God, except your love for God is not genuine. I mean, you are not serving God because you want to please people. You are not serving God because you want people to feel, oh, you are, let me tell my, Christ, my, my brethren I'm a Christian, like going to church in our age has become fashionable. No, if your, your relationship with God is on a personal basis, you have encountered God, like the Bible says, let every man run out his own salvation, her own salvation with fear and trembling. If your encounter with God is genuine, you will not end your, your journey in life in shame, in reproach, and in disgrace in Jesus' mighty name. Look at a clear picture of the ministry of Jesus. Luke chapter 4, verse 18 to 19. The ministry of Jesus is the ministry of turnaround. From sin to salvation, sickness to health, poverty to prosperity. Luke chapter 4, verse 18. This is Jesus declaring his ministry. Hallelujah. For the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. For he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. What is good news to the poor? Prosperity, blessings. Hallelujah. He has sent me to proclaim that captives will be released. To be a captive is to be in prison. What is good news to a man in captivity in prison is to be free. So the ministry of Jesus is basically the ministry of turnaround. From sin to salvation. From sickness to health. From poverty to prosperity. So if you truly claim that you are a born again Christian and you are still living the life you used to live when you are in the world, you've not really met Jesus. If you've met Jesus, something will change because his, his ministry is the ministry of turnaround. Hallelujah. That the blind will see that the oppressed will be set free. Look at verse 19. Glory be to Jesus Christ. And, and that the time of the Lord's favor has come. Amen. The time of the Lord's favor has come. So when Jesus come, the Lord's favor has come to you. Jesus say, I am the Lord's favor. And we know that favor is the cure for misfortune. Anywhere favor is, misfortune gives way. The lack of favor is the reason for misfortune. Where there is favor, there cannot be misfortune. There are struggles that shouldn't be when favor is in place. And Jesus said, I am that favor. So where the favor of God is, which is Jesus, the Son of God, there cannot be misfortune. So the ministry of Jesus is basically the ministry of turnaround. Welcome to the month of turnaround. Before the end of this October, I promise you, put your life in check and watch your life and see. If you commit yourself to God wholeheartedly and follow the things which I'm about to give to you now, the keys to turn around, you will practically experience the turnaround of God. Already we're in October. The year is almost gone. We have October, November, December. Dedicate these three months to the commitment of serving Jehovah, the Almighty God, and watch and see how you will end this year to the praise and the glory of the Almighty Father. Keys to turn around. I've been able to establish that we serve a God who is the God of turnaround, who is an expert in turning people's situation from bad to good, from evil to good. So how do I key into this turnaround anointing? How do I flow into this turnaround anointing? Number one, salvation. Salvation. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. Coming to the awareness of of what is wrong and willing to change. Glory be to Jesus Christ. What is salvation? Accepting Jesus into your heart as your Lord and your personal Savior. Coming to the awareness 
of what is wrong and willing to change. That is repentance. You realize that the life you have been living, the things you have been doing, they are not right. You make a U-turn. That is repentance. You are repenting. You are accepting Jesus, the life changer, into your life to change your life. Not just going to church. Hey, I belong to that church. It's not about the name of the church. It's not about the domination. No, salvation is a personal work. We are the church. We are the temple of God. The building is a gathering where we go to worship the Most High God. So salvation is you accepting Jesus as your Lord, as your Lord and your personal Savior. He becomes the owner of your soul, your spirit, your body, your life. Because a Lord is an owner. That is why you say the owner of a house is a landlord. If you say he is the Lord over your life, it means he owns you. He owns you. What you say, what you do is according to his will and his purpose for your life. So you can't claim that you are saved and yet you are not doing things according to his will. Amen, somebody. Glory be to Jesus. 2 Corinthians 5.17 This means that anyone who belongs to Christ has become a new person. A new person. The old life is gone. What does it mean to go? To, I mean gone. It's past. A new life has begun with an exclamation mark. A new life. So the one that used to steal, steal no more. The one that used to go around prostituting, do it no more. The one that used to lie, lie no more. Your life completely changed in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. By the encounter of receiving Jesus as your Lord and your Savior. So number one key to assess turnaround is salvation. Number two is loving God. Loving God and walking in His purpose. It's very important. We look at that again from Romans chapter 8 and verse 28. Romans 8 verse 28. Loving God and walking in His purpose. It's very important. Number one is salvation. It's not enough to surrender your heart to Him. Now truly and genuinely love the Lord. Amen. You wake up to pray in the morning not as an act of religion. Who you love, you are, you are, you are eager to talk with them. You want to spend time with them. You don't, you don't find it difficult to create time for people that you care for. If you truly love God, spending time with God is a natural thing. You wake up in the morning, good morning, Father. Good morning, Lord. You want to go to bed at night, good night, Lord. You want to do anything, you commit your day. You ask God for guidance and for leading. Hallelujah. Romans 8.28 For we know that all things work together for good to them that love God. Loving God and to them that we are called, to them who are called according to his purpose. So loving God and walking in his purpose. Walking in the will of God for your life. I pray in the name of Jesus, if you haven't discovered the purpose of God for your life, may God give you an understanding into his purpose. Because God's plan for your life is not your decision, it's your discovery. It's the reason why he sent you into this world. The day you find that reason and you begin to walk in it and you commit your heart to loving God, everything happening around you will end up working for your good in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Number three, how do I assess the turnaround anointing? Forget the past. Don't look back at the past. If you desire the turnaround anointing, you've encountered God, you are working in His purpose, there are things which He has rescued you from that you are praying for a turnaround for. You don't look back at it anymore. The Lord said to me, you can't change things you are proud of. Whatever you are proud of, you cannot change it. If you are letting go the past and you are thanking God for turn around, then don't be proud about it. Don't speak about it as if you are still interested in it. Don't look back at it because if you do, you might end up as Lot's wife. And may that not be your portion in Jesus' name. Genesis 19, 
verse 26. Glory be to Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. Genesis 19, 26. But his wife looked back from behind him and she became a pillar of salt. May you not end up in life as a pillar of salt. How many have ended up in life as a pillar of salt? Look at the scripture. But his wife looked back from behind him. Many of us claim to be followers, but we are not truly following. We are just in the crowd, occupying space, filling in numbers. Because our, our mind is still from where we are coming from. And every time your heart, your mind is where you are coming from, you end up as a pillar of salt. Her destiny ended up here as a pillar of salt. What a shame. May that not be your portion. If you truly want to encounter the turnaround anointing and you want everything in your life to turn around, you have to keep looking forward. Don't look back to the friends you have left behind. Don't look back to the kind of life you were living in the past. Don't look back to the things you were doing yesterday. Don't look back to the kind of things you were saying yesterday. Don't look back to wherever God has rescued you from, from yesterday. Any power that wants to take you back from where God has rescued you from, I rebuke in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Philippians 3 and verse 13. Philippians chapter 3 and verse 13. Glory be to Jesus. Denounce the past completely. Hallelujah. Don't allow your past and your presence to meet each other. It's dangerous. When your past and your present meet, you begin to live in confusion and eventually you give the devil access to take you back from where you are coming from. Look at Philippians 3 verse 13. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before. Look at the New Living Translation. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Philippians 3 verse 13. Listen. No, dear brothers and sisters, I have not achieved it. You have not arrived yet. Whatever you have today, you are not yet there. There is still more God wants to do for you in you and for your life. But I focus on this one thing, forgetting the past and looking forward to what lies ahead of me. Andoli Grini Mahandia. This is one area God is giving me strength in. Let the past look like it never exists anymore. Keep your, it's one secret to keep moving forward. It's one secret for progress and for advancement. May God give you that strength in Jesus' mighty name. Next key, we've looked at one, we've looked at two, we've looked at three. Number four, renew your mind and guide it. I wouldn't speak too much on it. I've been talking about it in the past week. Renew your mind and guide your mind. Hallelujah. Because every time change of turnaround must occur, it starts from within. So if you don't renew your mind and you don't guide it, it becomes a battlefield where the enemy will begin to play on you so that he can take you back from what God has rescued you from. Colossians chapter 3 and verse 2. Colossians chapter 3 and verse 2. Think about the things of heaven. Not the things of earth. Focus your mind on the things of God. Hallelujah. And in order for you to do so, deliver yourself from things that will make you think of things of the earth. Be careful what you allow your eyes to see and what you allow your ears to hear. It becomes your responsibility. The Holy Ghost isn't going to do that for you. Like I said about using your mind properly. Amen. God is not going to do for you what you can do for yourself. It becomes your responsibility to censors what you allow access into your mind. Hallelujah. You jealously guide your mind. You choose what you watch. You choose what you listen to. Praise the name of Jesus. And we all operate in different levels of grace. Amen, somebody. That is why the Bible says, if your meat will make your brother to sin, then do not eat it. Hallelujah. So you need to be very careful what you allow access to your mind or to your spirit by the eye and by the ear. Watch it and God will help you in Jesus' name. Proverbs chapter 4 and verse 23. Guide your heart above all else, for it determines the course of your life. Guide it. 
protect it. You wake up in the morning, don't say, hey, I don't know why the devil is just messing up with me. No, you allow him to, like I said, you cannot stop the thought from coming, but you can stop the thought from dwelling. You can't stop a bird from flying above your head, but you can stop a bird from building a nest on your head. So when the thought comes, if it's not a pleasant thought, it's not godly, rebuke it and reject it in the name of Jesus Christ. That is how you guide your heart. You see something you are not supposed to watch, change the channel. It's your responsibility. There is something you are listening to, you shouldn't change it. If you are sitting in the midst of people that are saying things that stand against what you believe in, you shouldn't sit down there, get up and leave the place. That is why the Bible says, Blessed is that man that sitteth not in the midst. There are certain midst of people you should not be found sitting in. Because it will poison your mind and if you are not careful, it will take you back to where God has rescued you from. Praise the Lord. May God give you grace in Jesus' mighty name. Key number five. Build the right kind of fellowship. First Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 11. Build the right kind of fellowship. Don't forsake fellowshipping with other believers. Iron sharpened iron is very important. Look at this scripture. So encourage each other. Build each other up. I have always said this. Any man, any woman who is not adding to your life, is not adding to your faith, stay away from them. You don't need them. Because anybody not adding to you is obviously subtracting from you. Unfortunately, most of us are surrounded with people who are just taking away, subtracting from us, subtracting from us. And if you don't watch it, before you know it, you are dead, you are gone. May God rescue your destiny. May God deliver you. May God deliver you in the name of Jesus Christ. So encourage each other and build each other up. How do you build each other if what you are saying or you are hearing is not edifying? Just as you are already doing. How do you do so? If what every time somebody come around you, have you heard have you seen that man? Have you seen that woman? Do you know what is the latest going on? Stay away from people like that. Look for people that when they leave you, you look at your life and say, I can do better. I think I can do better. Don't let people when they come and they leave you, you feel like, hey, I don't think I am in the right place serving God. No, the devil is a liar in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. So build right fellowship. Look for people going the way that you are going to. You've made a decision for an encounter with God. You've enjoyed a turnaround anointing. Look for people that have enjoyed the same anointing, that are going the same area and stay there. Praise the name of Jesus Christ. And so doing, you will enjoy the favor of God. Proverbs 27 and verse 17. Look and fellowship with the right kind of people. Proverbs 27 and verse 17. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Look at what the Bible says. Iron sharpens iron. So a friend. These are the kind of friends you should look for. So a friend sharpens a friend. Who is sharpening you? Amen. Praise the name of Jesus. If the friend you have is not an iron, how will you be sharpened? Praise the name of Jesus. But that's how most of us are. You are the only light in the midst of darkness. Very soon, your light will soon go dim. Look for people that will challenge your faith. People that will encourage your faith. People that will build your faith. And see how God will continuously use you and increase you. Iron sharpened iron. So a man sharpened the countenance of his friend. May God give you grace and understanding in Jesus' name. Key number six of how you can walk in the turnaround anointing. Hallelujah. Prayers. Li koji kalaba hangriba. Prayers. I like to define prayer as fellowshipping with God. Prayer is not a medium just to ask God for things. Unfortunately, most believers see prayers as a medium only to ask God for things. So every time we go to God in prayer, we are always asking for something. God, give me this. God, give me that. God, give me this. That is very bad. Imagine if you have a friend and every time the friend comes to you, he or she is always demanding from something. How will you feel? A time will come when you see the friend coming, you will claim you are busy. You will want to stay away from them. That is the way it is. Create a fellowship 
with God, genuine fellowship. And that is what prayer truly is. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Hallelujah. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is done in heaven. You keep talking to God. There is only one sentence in the Lord's prayer that has to do with asking. Give us this day our daily bread. Amen. But most of us, we spend from the beginning of our prayer to the ending of our prayer asking for daily bread. Worship the Lord. Spend time in worshiping God. If you can't sing, put on Christian music. Praises unto God. Hallowed be thy name. Spend time worshiping God. Ask God for mercy if you've wronged him. Forgive us these days our trespasses, even as we forgive those who have trespassed against us. Look for people who have offended you and say, Lord, I forgive them. I release them from my spirit. And if there is anywhere you have experienced a shortcoming before God in your words, your thoughts, or your deeds, because the Bible says, if we say we have no sin, we lie, and the truth is not in us. You ask God for mercy. Hallelujah. And you end your prayer again with worship. And sometimes you just come before God just to worship God, just to celebrate His goodness and His faithfulness. And sometimes you just come before God just to supplicate and intercede for others without saying anything about yourself. Hallelujah. Spend time in prayers, spend time worshiping God and experience the glory of God. John chapter 14, verse 13 to 14. Hallelujah. Alone with God, alone in His presence. John 14, 13 to 14. He said, And whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, that I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. Verse 14. Hallelujah. Praise God. If ye shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. Praise God. What a friend we have in Jesus. What a friend we have in Jesus. Glory be to God. May God give you grace and strength in Jesus' name. Key number seven, and then one more, we begin to pray. Key number seven, redefine your goals in life and don't give up. God has just delivered you, just like Rahab, the prostitute. Redefine your goal from a prostitute to an honorable woman. Like Saul, from Saul to Paul the Apostle. Redefine your goal in life and don't give up. If you are a businessman or woman listening to me or you own a company, the same thing. Redefine the goal of your office. Redefine the goal of your business and do not give up. Redefine it. Lord, I thank you for the turnaround anointing that I've encountered. Redefine that goal and focus on it and do not give up. Second Chronicles chapter 15 and verse 7. Matoko jikla nitoko limana hangre diaba. And keep your eyes on that goal. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Look at this. Be ye strong, therefore, and let not your hands be weak, for your work shall be rewarded. Look at the New Living Translation. Redefine your goals and do not give up. Set new goals for yourself. You can't have the same goal you used to have if you have encountered a turnaround. But as for you, be strong and courageous. Don't give up. For your work will be rewarded. Set a new assignment for yourself and pursue it. And see how the light of God will shine upon you. And finally, number eight, how you walk in the turnaround anointing is delight yourself in God. Stay committed, stay focused, stay dedicated to the Most High God. Psalms 37, verse 4 to 5. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory be to Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Take delight in the Lord, and He will give you your heart's desire. Psalm 118, and verse 8. Father, we give you glory and honor. It is better to take refuge in the Lord than to trust in people. I leave you with these words from the Lord. It's our month of turnaround. Walk in these eight keys I've put in your hand. Your life will never be the same again in the name of Jesus. 
If you've not given your heart to Christ, that is where it starts from. Genuinely, if you've not, I'm not talking about going to church. I'm talking about if any man be in Christ, not if any man be in church. You can be in church and yet you are not in Christ. But what the Bible is talking about is being in Christ. And when you are in Christ, it's expected of you in Christ to be in church as a place of worship with other believers for iron sharpened iron. Lift your hands if you haven't done so and ask Jesus into your heart as your Lord and Savior. Surrender your life to him. Ask him to forgive you of your sins in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. If you've prayed that prayer, congratulations. You are saved, washed by the blood of Jesus Christ. Now lift up your hand number one and say in the name of Jesus, I am a new creature. All things are passed away. I therefore decree and declare, I will not go back from where I have been delivered from. Begin to pray that prayer in Jesus' mighty name. All things are passed away. I'm a new creature. I will not go back from where I have been delivered from. In Jesus' mighty name. Prayer number two. Say, my father, my God, I stand upon your word and I resist every effort, every power of the wicked to take me back from where you have delivered me from. I resist every power and every effort of the wicked. In the name of Jesus, clap your hands and begin to pray. I reject it in the name of Jesus. I will not go back to where God has rescued my destiny from. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Prayer number three. Say, my Father, my Maker, I receive now the anointing of turnaround in every area of my life in the name of Jesus Christ. Begin to mention those areas. Be very specific in your prayer. I'm deli chronomo shkili bena angra dias. Be specific in your marriage, in your business, in your health, in your life, in your body. Mention that area that you want to experience the anointing for turn around. Lord, I receive the anointing for turn around. In this area, in this area, in this area of my life, your financial life, your fi your marital life, begin to prophesy. Matoko zikletine klina ma angra dia. In the name of Jesus. Now prayer number four, say in the name of Jesus, October is my month of turnaround. I shall experience the anointing of turnaround this month in the name of Jesus Christ. Begin to pray that prayer. I shall experience the anointing of turn around as I go out and as I come in in every area of my life in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And finally, ask God for grace to stay delight in the Lord, to be focused in the Lord. Lord, I receive that grace. Lord, I receive it. Lord, I receive it in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. There's a woman that is having a terrible pain. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. On your waist. Ikulibia. On your waist and it goes downwards. I decree right now. Lay your hands there. Receive your healing in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. There is a man who a curse is put on you and is affecting your marriage. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus you can't feel your body anymore. I am praying for life upon you now. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, receive life in Jesus' name. Wherever you are sick, lay your hands where the sickness is. In the mighty name of Jesus, I release the healing power of Christ upon you right now. Be healed and be made whole. Be delivered in the mighty name of Jesus. You are healed. You are saved in Jesus' mighty name. Praise God. Please don't forget our fasting, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, 5 p.m. each day, 6 to 6. Make sure you make it a date with God. Your life will never be the same again. God bless you. God keep you in Jesus' name. Amen.